All right, welcome back. Uh, so we finished Movie Quotes. Movie Quotes is done. Uh, movie Quotes is working locally. Uh, let's go ahead and do the various steps to deploy. Uh, so deploy at, goes to a couple different platforms, uh, and there's some different configurations that you're going to need to do. Let's do the, um, the required one first, um, and then we'll just kind of show you a little bit about the other optional things. Uh, the required one is that you deploy it to firebaseapp.com. Before I do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and fix the fav icon. Uh, this is just like we've done, you know, many times before. I go to rules.com.edu slash fav icon, uh, and then I save image as, um, and I'm just going to try to, like, shoot it into the right spot. Uh, so I find my Ionic movie quotes here. Uh, I go into my source. I go into my assets. I go into my icon, uh, and there's the fav icon. So I hit save, and I say replace. I definitely want to replace it, so that was good. Uh, other things I can do that like affect my my required one is there's an index.html um, and it says Ionic app in here um, and I'd rather that said movie quotes right so that's an index.html that's just like we've done many times. There's a thing in here by the way about the service worker uh, this is to make it more like so this is for the progressive web app stuff. You could uncomment this um, and it would improve your progressive web app. But what it also does is it, it caches a bunch of stuff um, and it makes it really kind of annoying to do development with because you keep having to like fight with your cache. So um, if you're making a production web app, progressive web app, definitely uncomment this. But for what we're doing, don't mess with it because it'll just make your life harder with caching. So the only thing I had to change there was in the index.html and the fav icon. So now I'm ready to do the, uh, the steps that I'm used to doing, which is a Firebase init. Um, and then from Firebase and Net, I'm going to choose just hosting. Um, and you can choose where you want to push it to. I'm going to push mine to uh, Ionic Movie Quotes. You'll probably push yours just to plain old Movie Quotes just to save a project. Um, since I'm using Ionic, the uh, public directory is just www. Configure as a single page web app, you betcha. Uh, it already exists. Do you want to override it? No, I do not. Uh, so there, my initialization is done. Uh, and then I'll do a Firebase deploy. Um, and so it looks like my Firebase tools need to be updated yet again. Uh, but it's doing the, uh, the deployment, which is pretty fast. The only difference versus what we did before is that there was no step for uh, ng build prod. So we just, the thing we serve locally, the www that we're doing locally, is the same one that we're shipping off uh, to deploy. Uh, once it finishes, you can uh, get your URL from there. Uh, and you can open up a new tab, uh, and you can uh, check it out uh, and see if it works. Uh, obviously, on your page, uh, you're going to want to use the, um, the mobile version. Uh, and so you can say, works uh, from test. Um, and so it looks like it, it works just fine. Uh, I typed the word work instead of works, uh, so I can test edit. That's the only required uh, deployment that you have to do. Uh, so once you get that done, um, if you're taking this class for credit, you can copy that URL and submit that. I also like to show you, though, uh, more things you can do. Uh, so if you're trying to set this guy up as a you know, progressive web app and an iOS app and an Android app, uh, there's a couple more things that you can do. One thing you can do is you can set your icon font. Uh, so I've got a link here, so this is just in the main doc, uh, to a file you can download to use as your icon. Uh, so you can download this guy. Uh, you need to download this to a couple places. Um, looks like right now it's putting it into the icon folder. Uh, that's a fine place. That's one of the places we'll want to we'll want to put it. Uh, but there's actually two places we want to put it. So I'm going to copy it from here. Uh, and I also want to put it into the resources folder. So Assets is good for your like progressive web app, so that's why we put it there. Uh, but we want to actually put it in the resources folder. Where's the resources folder at? Ah, there I am. Blinds about resources right there. Um, and you can see that there's something called icon.png already right in here. Uh, and so I'm going to replace it uh, with this new one. And so now I've got my own icon. The way this works is you create one file called icon. Um, and then what it does is it'll auto-generate uh, all these other ones for you. 
uh, using their, their command CLI. So it's got like all these different icons that you need. Uh, but once I run a command, it's going to blow them all away uh, with this icon. Uh, and that command, just because I forget what that command is, uh, I'm going to go to my components here. Uh, and I'm going to go into the CLI uh, right here. Um, and you can see that there's one for resources here. So the command is actually um, Ionic Cordova Resources. Uh, and then you can optionally specify a platform if you want. What that'll do is that'll take that icon.png uh, and it'll generate a bunch of files. Uh, I'm going to go and check in what I've got right now just to make sure. So this is um, Firebase App Deploy. Uh, so now I'm going to type uh, Ionic Cordova Resources uh, and what that'll do, um, oh, looks like it wants me to uh, add the platforms first, fine. Um, Ionic Cordova Platform uh, Add iOS. So now it's adding iOS. Uh, so there, are, iOS is done. Uh, may as well go ahead and add the platform for Android as well. Um, now, to be perfectly honest, I was thinking that in the setup step, I said to do it for both platforms, and I thought that would have done it, but apparently there was one more step. Uh, so I'll just wait for Ionic Cordova Platform Add Android to finish. Uh, looks like it's done there. Now I should be able to do Ionic Cordova Resources. Um, and what it'll do is it'll generate uh, all those files uh, as appropriate. Um, and so you can see that it, it changed a whole bunch of drawable files. Uh, I think looking at them in the finder is probably the easiest thing to do. But it created all the right sizes of my icon for me, um, you know, which I appreciate. Um, I didn't want to do that all manually. Uh, so I'm just going to say uh, generate uh, icons. Uh, other things you can do is uh, you can make changes to this config.xml. Uh, so this config.xml like defines um, you know like things like the name of your app. So I'll type movie quotes. Uh, and so I want it to be uh, show up below the icon as movie quotes. I left out the space intentionally because like it fits without a space, but it doesn't fit with a space. Uh, you could also change your version number uh, if you wanted to like set up your version numbering. Um, and then, you know, you could put a description, which would be like if you were putting it on the App Store. Um, so this is like my test app, right? Uh, you could put in your email address if you wanted to do that. So you could use like rollsholman.edu. Um, you can put in your, your username or, or whatever. Fill out this information to your heart's content. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to put on any of it. Uh, and so the author is Gary Fisher, right? That stuff would only show up like if you're actually going to put it in the App Store. The only thing I actually care about is this name, movie quotes. Um, it's also interesting. So config.xml is for iOS and Android native apps, but there's also this manifest.json. Manifest.json is for your progressive web app. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set it up in here as well. Um, so I'll just go ahead and say movie quotes, uh, short name. I'll tell you what, I'll just say quotes because you'll you'll see how that name gets used later. Um, Index.html, standalone, those things are fine. Uh, the icon, where was the icon? The icon was actually in the icon folder and it was called icon.png. Uh, that was the, the very first thing that we pasted in. So it was under assets, icon, uh, icon.png. Uh, technically its size was um, 192 by 192. Uh, and that was just because that's the biggest size that iOS uses on iPads. So they use a 192. Uh, background color, this is for your splash screen. Uh, may as well use the rose red, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and so now whenever I've got all these things in, uh, my progressive web app should behave differently, right? I will have to re-upload it to get these progressive web app changes. The other thing you could do for progressive web apps, as I mentioned this previously, uh, is you could you know, um, enable the, the service worker and that will make it work uh, better. Um, I guess what the heck, I could try it. Uh, but I just, the, the, the whole caching thing is annoying. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll stop my local host serving uh, and I'll uh, just uncomment it temporarily. <laughs> um, and then, um, you know, it'll be on my deployed but not on my local host testing because I don't want it to make my local host testing annoying. 
Uh, so I guess I do need to do another um, Firebase deploy since I made changes to these progressive web apps. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and kick that off. Uh, cool, so it's done there and I'm gonna uncomment that just to make my, my local host stuff not affected by the service worker. Uh, I guess I could show the progressive web app first. Uh, so let's just go ahead and see if I could uh, connect to my phone here. Uh, and so what I wanna do is I just wanna open up Chrome uh, and I want to go visit uh, this website one time uh, so I can go visit it. it looks like it's already up uh, and then what I want to do is I just want to uh, add it uh, to the home screen so I just right click here and I say uh, add to home screen which is this guy right here quote uh, you can see that that's where that showed up before uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say a movie quote instead uh, plural um, and so what that does is it adds it to your home screen. So you can see it added it to the home screen right there. Uh, and then this is the, the progressive web app. Um, and whenever I click it, you can see it kind of loads. It's got that background color of red, like I said it would. Uh, and it loads in just fine. And I mean, you can see that the first time it loads, it's kind of slow, but then subsequent times it just, it just automatically launches. So obviously it's not just a website. Uh, it's quite a bit more than that. Now you compare that to um, what Apple does with progressive web apps, and it's really pretty unimpressive uh, in Apple land, right? So it's still a website. Um, I'll tell you what, I want the, I'll use the, my hardware keyboard. It makes it easier to type. So I can go to Fisher DS, uh, Ionic, uh, movie, quote, dot Firebase app, dot com. Uh, and you can see that it loads fine. Uh, and then I can say send to... Um, and then we can say add to home screen right here. Um, so it'll add it to the home screen. Um, and so now you can see that there's my, my progressive web app <laughs> uh, right there. Um, you can see it didn't honor the icon right. Um, I'm pretty sure I can fix that uh, by making a change to the uh, index.html. Uh, but to be honest, I'm just not extremely worried about it. But you can see all it really is is it's a, it's a bookmark, right? So you can click it. Um, and it's just a bookmark uh, into Safari. It's also annoying that you can't even use Chrome with progressive web apps. So this is why progressive web apps are not as popular. Um, it's because iOS doesn't, doesn't support them right. So that was one of the deployment targets. Uh, the other deployment targets are native apps. Uh, so we'll have to come over here and we'll say um, Ionic Cordova uh, build iOS. Um, you can say build or you can say run. What build does is build just builds it for you. Uh, run tries to like um, open Xcode and launch it for you. Personally, I would rather it did a little bit less. Uh, you will get an error. Um, so the error is about this resolve polyfill. Uh, we ran into this last time too, but it's a um, angular fire issue with Ionic, uh, but it's trivially easy to fix. Um, I remember the command, it's an npm install, but I just, I look it up again uh, so that I can copy it from somewhere. So this guy's the one that got all kinds of votes. npm install, uh, polyfill promise, save exact. Uh, so that's easy, easy thing to add there. Um, and so with the Angular CLI, I managed to avoid that issue, but with Ionic, uh, it comes up. So now I can do it again. Uh, Ionic Cordova build uh, iOS, so it'll start building this guy. So it'll take a little bit. Uh, cool, so it finished there. It gave me a little bit of grief. Um, I had to do, let me just show you the last commands. I had to actually remove it and then add it back uh, and then build it, uh, which was delightful. Um, and so let's go ahead and see um, if we can open this thing up. So if I go into Xcode uh, and I say open, uh, I've got to navigate down into that folder. It's like the hardest part is finding the right folder. Uh, platforms, iOS, uh, it looks like you can open up the project or you can open up the, the CocoaPods version uh, of the workspace. I don't think it matters which one you open because I'm not using CocoaPods, uh, but I'm going to go and open up the, uh, the, the CocoaPods uh, workspace one there. Um, of course, it'll be missing a little bit of things. Um, it needs a bundle identifier, uh, which I'll just say is edu.rolesholman.moviequotes. Um, it'll be missing the uh, team, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it on my personal team. Um, it will figure out provisioning profiles and things like that. Uh, and then I'm going to run it on a simulator. Uh, I'm just going to run it on an iPhone 7 simulator. Uh, and 
It gives me a couple of warnings and, and deprecated things, but I'm not really worried about any of those. Uh, cool, so now it should have run it on a simulator. Uh, so now it's launching it over here. Uh, you can see that the splash screen uh, was still the old the old one, but the icon is correct. So that's, this is the one I showed you in the first lecture. This one's the progressive web app. This is the one we just made. Uh, you'll note that it's got no space between moving quotes. Um, turns out it would have fit, so I, I messed up on that. Um, but you can see that it uh, it works fine. Uh, so this is uh, quotes. Uh, oops, not not typing right. I don't know why I wasn't typing right, but I'll just use the native keyboard. So quote from uh, iOS native, right? Cool. So now I've got uh, iOS native in there, uh, and that all worked fine. If I want to go into it and edit it, uh, I could go in here and I could put, uh, you know, an exclamation point or something like that on. Uh, so there's my quote from iOS native. Um, and obviously, if I look at my progressive web app in Android, you can see that it showed up just fine. It's kind of fun to uh, to play with all these different things. So I mean, here's my progressive web app in Android. Here's my native iOS app. Here's, you know, my web app inside iOS. Um, the only one I haven't done yet is um, building for Android. So I need to build for Android uh, so I can make a native app in Android. Uh, looks like it's done there. So I open up uh, Android Studio. I open an existing Android Studio project and I drill down to, uh, to find where it's at. So it's under documents. Uh, Rose, Summer is where I did these video recordings. I'm looking for one called Ionic Movie Quotes. Where's Ionic Movie Quotes? Oh, there it is. Took a little while for it to upload. Uh, and then inside Ionic Movie Quotes, we've got a platform for uh, Android and iOS. Uh, and so for Android, I'm just going to select the folder that's called Android. Uh, when I open it, it's going to give me some like update, Gradle, wrapper, things like that. And I'm going to say yes to all of those things. Uh, so I'm going to say update. Yeah, fine. Uh, once it's finished its update, I should be able to uh, install it, the native app on my phone. Uh, there's no like signing things that you have to worry about in Android, which is kind of nice. Uh, so it looks like it's ready to go. So I'll say run on uh, my Nexus 5, uh, which is just the phone that I've got connected right here. Uh, and so it's going to go ahead and launch the native Android app for us. Uh, there it's coming up. Uh, you can see that we didn't do anything to the splash screen, so it still is kind of the white screen. Uh, and then from here, we can say a uh, quote that you like. We'll just say Android uh, works uh, from native Android. Cool. And so I add that quote, uh, and you can see that it's up in uh, native Android app. And you can see that it also added an icon for me here. Um, oh, it didn't add the icon, right? Why did it not add the icon, right? Um, so I added the icon, it just didn't add it to the to the home screen. So now I've got a native app that I can open. Um, I've got a progressive web app that I can open. Um, I've got <laughs> I've, I've got a iOS app that I can run. Um, I've also got the um, of course the deployed uh, website as well. So uh, I've got all these things. Uh, they all work fine. Uh, I guess I never did an edit from uh, Android Works. But if I edit that quote, you can see that it changed there, uh, and then it also changed here. Um, and then if you've got a bunch of garbage, you can practice deletes. So there's a delete from Android. Uh, here's a delete from iOS. Uh, and then here's a delete from the web. Uh, and everything, because it's Firebase, Firebase stays in sync perfectly. Uh, so a little bit of fun with Ionic there. Uh, just kind of wetting your whistle for things you can do. If you want to really get into Ionic, you'll have to start learning about their plugins. Uh, but we'll leave that as an exercise for you. All right, that's the end of this unit. Uh, come back uh, next time. We'll see if there's something more fun we can do. <laughs> see you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.